Hello and welcome to uh, the ESM 101 series. In this particular case, we're talking about the fourth. In this particular case, we're talking about the fourth session, so ESM 104, and this is dashboards and data monitors. Without further ado, let's jump into things. So we're going to talk about what is a dashboard and how is that in comparison to a data monitor, and how do we use uh, data monitors? Uh, what do they actually do? So what is a dashboard and what is a data monitor? Well, a dashboard is, think of this as um, a canvas that we can put data in. It could be a geographical view, it could be other things, but we're bringing together and summarizing event data into different statistical views. A data monitor is something that allows us to analyze and track event streams, generate correlation events, and provide summary data to the dashboard. You can see that they're linked. A dashboard typically is made up of multiple data monitors, and a data monitor is something that occurs in the background to summarize, do calculations, and create correlation events, but additionally provide summary data to a dashboard to view. It's a little bit confusing, but you can kind of see how this actually maps together. But it's what's the building blocks of a data monitor? That's probably the first place to start. Now, Whenever we're creating a data monitor, the first thing we need to do is create the filter. So what is it that we're looking for? What's the specific set of events that we want to make and match so we can see those events? Next, we do need to define the time criteria that we want to use. What are we using? Is it a particular field? Remember, we talked about the actual timestamps that are available in the first event of Remember, we talked about time criteria and fields in the first video where we talked about the different uh, fields that we could use here, whether it be end time or manager receipt time. So just consider what we're looking for. Is it the time of generation uh, or is it time that we receive this and so on? Just consider that an event and how long we want to have those events for. And then we need to consider how we want to aggregate those. Is it by a particular address? Is it by a port number, username, and so on? It'll make more sense in a second, but you know we need to understand how we filter and identify the events that we're looking for. What's the time criteria that we're looking for and the, the period that we're looking for? And then ultimately, how do we aggregate those events together? So let's look at the building blocks for a data monitor. Now, in most data monitors, we're gonna be looking at some sort of value field. So that's typically gonna be a number field in the event schema itself. So consider what we're looking for there. It could be things like aggregated event count, bytes in, bytes out, uh, a, a custom number, and so on. So typically we're looking to aggregate on a number so we can do a calculation. Uh, and then we typically wanna use a field set of how we wanna drill down and look at those events specifically going on. But we need to understand a time bucket. Now, what is a time bucket? So it's a window, and it defines the time period we're trying to use to calculate these statistics. Now, this is something we hadn't mentioned a minute ago, but a data monitor allows us to do calculations and to do statistical calculations, specifically moving averages, statistics, calculations, sampling. Now, what we use is a bucket mechanism, and a bucket defines a time period, and we group those events by that time period, and we can do a calculation. So those buckets are used for aging out the data. So once we get to the end of the time period we're interested in, it'll dispose of those buckets accordingly. So they're only removed from the data monitor's memory. Now remember, again, we talked about this as the life cycle, the, the way that the events flow through the system as a whole. Data monitors are one particular element of the process and it flows into those data monitors and then ultimately onto the next stages accordingly. So we're not deleting anything, this is just an extra calculation that we're doing if an event matches a particular filter, remember we have to filter on this, matches that filter, it then gets passed to those data monitors to do this additional statistical calculation. So what is a time bucket? Now you could define a bucket size of 300, that's seconds, and a number of buckets of 12. So what does that mean? Well, you've got 12 total buckets of five minutes a bucket, 300 seconds is five minutes, uh, and then we get a total of one hour worth of data, and it's going to calculate the statistics based on those individual buckets across an hour of data. And then when a bucket is to be expired, it's done in a bucket of 300 seconds that's removed from that calculation. So you can see how this works and what the bucket is and how that relates to the number of buckets and how we do the calculations and apply those across as well. It's all statistical calculations. Just a little bit of a note on the uh, best practice around this one. So what's best? 
bucket size, number of buckets, uh, it's hard to estimate things and so on. Just figure out the time range you're trying to do and what you're interested in and then choose the bucket size to get enough data to make it significant. So uh, you don't want a bucket size of a second and equally you don't want a bucket size of 3,600 3, seconds and only have one bucket. You want to make this a combination of both. So a reasonable sized bucket maybe a minute two minutes five minutes is suitable and then have multiple buckets to do those calculations over you, you can kind of see how the efficiency is working here uh, we want we don't want to do calculations every second we want to do calculations every 30 seconds or every minute and then have a much longer time period accordingly so just think about how that works uh, and consider the uh, aspects of what we're doing there as well there are many different types of data monitor so we can do uh, event date based data monitors we can do things like top values asset count last number of events hourly counts hierarchy map last state event graph geographic event graph and rule partial match a couple of those are very specific and we won't be digging into those but let's let's step through a couple of other scenarios around uh, what we can also do with a data monitors we can do correlation data monitors so we can do uh, further analysis of things based on event correlation event reconciliation session reconciliation moving average and statistics and we can do non event based data monitors which are very specific around ESM system information so those are for system information only and would be for uh, administration and monitoring only. Typically, most organizations are going to be looking at the correlation data monitors where we're looking at event correlation, event reconciliation, moving average and statistics type calculations where the system itself is going to be generating some events based on a calculation. And that ends us this particular session. Uh, thank you very much.